Hello there. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how I profited from the international pandemic. Now, this video has arisen because I rather stupidly put this out to a poll to my loyal subscribers. I gave them four different options to choose from. And gradually, as one person kindly pointed out that it was a contentious subject that would make me look bad and make me have to defend myself, it's now the winner with 32% of 430 votes, how I profited from the international pandemic. So get prepared to watch me squirm. I did profit from the international pandemic in two separate ways and I'm going to explain those to you and justify it to you as well. So why is it a contentious issue? Well remember the 2007 or whatever it was uh, financial crash, certainly that's when it happened here in the UK. At the time a lot of bankers appeared on the television and I think one banker specifically, and I'll put a video here if I can. Uh, I, I had a confession which is uh, I go to bed every night, I dream of another recession. Which is a morally reprehensible thing to wish for. But whether you like it or not, there are people who make money from other people's misfortune. So when there's a war, people make money from manufacturing weapons and things that armies use. When there is a financial crash, people who have shorted, as it's called, stocks and things that are overinflated on the stock market, they will make money if there is a crash on the stock market. Because we're a capitalist world, people try to make money wherever they can. So every situation, people will make money, even if those situations are really uncomfortable. So that's just the way it is. So I think I've hopefully successfully defended myself against what I'm about to say, because there are two ways in which I have made money during the international pandemic. Not huge sums of money. I think that's a message. These aren't investments that I made in the hope that there would be an international pandemic. These are just things that I did before the pandemic and indeed in response to the pandemic that generated a bit of money. And the first one of those is purchasing gold. So back in 2015, for some reason, and I'm not really sure why, I became a little bit addicted to buying precious metals. I think I watched a lot of YouTube videos saying that they were both undervalued commodities. Are they commodities? No, they're probably assets, actually, thinking about it. They're kind of pretty and shiny to collect, and looking at the graphs at the time, they seemed like they were pretty undervalued. Essentially, the reason to buy gold and silver and precious metals like that is because when the proverbial poo hits the fan in world economies, the stock market goes down, generally the price of gold goes up. And why is that? Gold is seen as a hedge against those kind of disaster scenarios because gold maintains its value, it's got value across different countries. An ounce of gold is an ounce of gold. Um, it's historically been a store of wealth. So if you think your economy is a little bit dodgy, you store it in gold to be safe. And I kind of got into collecting it, if you like. So I had a bit of solid gold and lots of silver spoons because uh, I don't know why, I just became a bit obsessed with it. Past me was, you know, is a bit weird whereas I'm completely normal. 2015 was incredibly low prices. I think I paid between seven and 800 pounds for um, an ounce of gold. And I bought a few of them and held on to them for you know years. And I watched prop the gold price, well, essentially go up. It didn't really go down any more than that. It went up, but then went down, but then went up and kind of, you know, always higher than I paid for it, probably stabilised at about £1,000 an ounce here in the UK. Then we had an international pandemic and the price of gold, because of the global uncertainty over the virus and the effect it was going to have on international economies, the price of gold went up here in the UK to one and a half thousand pounds an ounce. So I essentially more than doubled my money. 
Now, crucially, I haven't sold any of my gold, and that's because I'm an idiot. If you make 100% profit on your investment, you're an ass if you don't sell, because everything else is just greed. And that is actually one of the biggest downfalls of investors, continually hoping that their investment is going to go up and up and higher and higher and that they can make more and more profit from it to the point that eventually they make no money or they lose money. So if you do make a good return on an investment, you're supposed to reap that reward. Actually having the money in your hand is better than the hope of having it. But I haven't sold it. Um, and the gold price is currently at about £1,400 an ounce. Um, and I'm not intending to sell it. And the reason I'm not intending to sell it is firstly because I can't be bothered, which is completely wrong. Secondly, that money is a hedge for me. I am a scientist who has a lot of short-term contracts. I never know when my employment is going to run out. Well, I do. It was going to run out in November. It's been extended till June. I need that as a safety net. Uh, if I have that money in my bank account, I will spend it on a car or a computer or something possibly i have got more self control than that but i don't want that money in my bank account i want it as physical gold so that it's available to me in the event that i really really need to pay my mortgage so that's why i haven't sold it but i fully expect the price of gold to fall further unless you know the effects of the pandemic globally is uh, greater than it is currently, which is possible. And indeed, we're about to fully leave the European Union, fully, fully, probably without a deal. And that could have financial implications for the country. So it's kind of, you know, in a way, there's an argument for keeping it. But in terms of an investment, I would sell now, but I'm not going to. Anyway, that's the first way in which I profited unintentionally from the international pandemic. Number two, early on, in the pandemic here in the UK, I was having a rest after a long day of work, as I often do, laying on my bed with my laptop at 90 degrees because I can't be bothered to sit up because I'm quite tired by the end of the day. And I was on the BBC News website and I happened to notice a story about oil prices. Oil prices, the lowest in history or something, or the lowest for X number of years. And I checked the oil prices and they had fallen off an absolute cliff. Obviously because of the UK lockdown and lockdowns throughout the world, the demand for oil collapsed overnight as people no longer needed to fill up their cars with gas or petrol as it's actually called, uh, in order to get to work or travel around because they physically weren't allowed to. So the price, it fall, fell, it fell, it fell, by more than half to, I can't remember actually, what was it? To about $22 or between 20 and $22 a barrel of oil. Now, when you get news like that as an investor, and I'm not an investor, I'm just a dabbling amateur, don't take my financial advice and paraphrasing Warren Buffett here, but when everybody else is kind of running scared, that's when you should invest. And oil prices at a record low, and you can actually identify what the cause of that is as an amateur, it's, it's obvious people can't use their cars, seems like the perfect time to invest. Obviously, you know, playing devil's advocate, what happens if oil is completely decimated and collapsed, but eventually economies would return to normal and surely the price of oil should return to normal. So it seemed like the perfect time to invest. So I intended to invest about 500 pounds in oil and see you know, what kind of money I could make from it. Now, how am I going to invest in oil? Am I, am I going to buy a physical barrel of oil like that annoying advert that always pops up uh, every time I watch a YouTube video? Or am I going to invest in some kind of stocks and shares or something that's linked to oil? Well, that's exactly 
what I did. I found an oil ETC, I think it's called, something, something commodity, uh, which tracked the price of oil. Now, I didn't invest in that in the end because I found it tracked the price of oil perfectly. I went to invest my money in it and then I read the fact sheet and it was a seven out of eight risk level or something and the, basically the warning was uh, there's a possibility they won't be able to pay out your money at the end of it uh, essentially a bit like the paper gold it's like paper oil you don't really own anything um, although you know do you actually ever own a thing that's too philosophical for this discussion anyway I steered clear of that and I found another fund called an ETF which is basically a fund so there's a fund manager who invests in a lot of different areas related to oil so this fund price should generally track the price of oil but not at the same exactly the same price levels and you know I got a little bit I thought well this is a really good opportunity so I invested a thousand pounds in an ETF called SPOG and you can go and check it for yourself I bought it at the beginning of April just as the price had collapsed and I sat on it for several weeks and I watched the price kind of slowly rise again as market confidence returned and people thought actually this is a short-term thing isn't it and coming back to the greed thing I mentioned earlier it was going up and up and up and that probably wasn't going to be sustained so after it had jumped a few times I decided to sell like a month or something after I'd actually bought it the price had gone up about 40 percent I pocketed 403 pounds in profit from investing in this oil ETF. Now, realistically, maybe it would go back down again and I'm sure it will go up to pre-lockdown levels and I would have made more money, but I didn't want to be greedy and I'd made 40% profit, so I took it and I ran, profiting from the international pandemic. I think this video is a little bit clickbaity, really, although true, but actually, you know, it's not as if I've gone to a betting shop and bet on an international pandemic in 2020 and made a load of money from it. Keep your finger on the pulse of the news. Obviously investments can go up as well as down. Um, it's always gambling and I find it very difficult to see it as anything other than gambling, although professional investors will tell you it's not. And indeed they do try, They have there are strategies you can put in place. It's all about balancing risk essentially. And this, you know, was a cross between a punt and uh, an intelligent investment. Anyway, let me know. Do you think I'm morally reprehensible uh, for this action? Anyway, have you made money from the international pandemic? Uh, be careful what you say and let me know down below. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for suggesting it. Subscribers, very, very kind of you. Anyway, thank you to my loyal Patreons who for just a few dollars a month get early access to all of my videos. George Foote and Magnanimous Meg are extremely generous patrons. Patreons. If you're interested in supporting my Patreon, the link is on my main channel homepage. Thanks for watching again. Do subscribe and I shall see you next time for another video.